Hey guys, Sandy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with an, another video. This is another video we're going to be adding to the 40k orc playlist. Somebody in my comment section a week or two ago very kindly requested a how to paint deaf copters video in a quick and easy manner. So I'm eager to please. So that is what I've done for you guys here today. So stick around guys and enjoy the video. Okay, at first glance, a deaf copter can seem like a very intimidating thing to paint full of detail and all those extra bits and pieces. And honestly, you can ignore about 90% of them. This is orc technology. It is supposed to be ramshackle, rusty, bashed and broken. So I'm going to show you guys how to paint it very fast uh, and to a nice standard um, without uh, spending days painting each and every one. So the model got built, sprayed black. And the first thing I did was got some Rhinox hide and I basically brushed this on on top of all of the actual deaf copter itself. Every single part of it, we just want to give the move, shift the tone from black to brown. After that, we're going to add riser rust as a dry paint. And we're going to stipple this all over the deaf copter. If you don't know what stippling is, it's basically the idea of loading up your brush, kind of like dry brushing, removing most of the paint and then going on a stabbing motion um, at the, the model. This is gonna leave kind of a rough mottled effect across the hull. And with this, we're gonna go for like an undertone of rust across the entire thing. So that's what we're trying to achieve here. So this is the first coat of rust. It's a very quick and very effective way of painting rust. I suggest you guys store this technique in your brains. It is useful on so many other projects and I use it all the time. Once you finish stippling on all the orange, you move over to lead belcher, just a nice dark silver and give the entire uh, deaf copter itself a dry brush of that silver, just catching all the edges. This is how rust would act in, in nature. I don't know whether rust is from nature, but you know what I mean, out in the real world, these kind of edges and stuff are the things that are gonna get scraped and scuffed and rubbed against, and it's gonna be the kind of flatter panels which are gonna be left with the rust. So it's gonna give you this beautiful, beaten old metal look, which I think screams orc. Okay, once we've got that tone uh, locked in, it's time to start adding some color to the depth copter. Now my orcs are gonna be speed freaks, so they're gonna be based around uh, reds, blacks, and like an off-white color. So I'm gonna start with my fist on red, and I'm gonna pick out particular panels on this depth copter and just do a very sloppy kind of uh, coat of paint. I don't mean you physically be sloppy, but remember that an orc pilot picked up a paintbrush and painted his depth copter. It is not supposed to be this crisp, pristine looking job that's not what they do it's got to be rough and ready and it's got to be done you know 60 years ago for all you know and it's kind of still been ramshackle and broken and the paint is rubbed off and then so you're not looking for solid coats so i'm doing this kind of almost like a feathered technique i'm leaving the silver and the brown all the way around the edges of every panel that i apply red to and i just go in and do some nice streaks of red across any panels that i feel should be red and that's very much what this is. It's all about how you feel. The more red you want, you can go for it. The less red you want, the less you go for it. It's simple as. Celestial Grey was used for those kind of white panels. Once again, I don't like painting with just pure white. I don't think it turns up all that well. Uh, with one coat of Celestial Grey, you're going to give the illusion of having something be old uh, white paint. And this is the same thing. Again, you're going to pick specific panels. It's going to be a lot less than the red, obviously. I'm going to do the fuel tank those uh, kind of spiky teeth bits at the front and a couple of the other panels I'm just going to pick out and do a light coat of celestial gray. This just pulls it away from just being red. When you have finished applying the celestial gray to uh, wherever you want to apply it to, we're actually going to go back and dry brush the whole machine again with lead belcher. The reason we're doing this now uh, and again is it's a much lighter dry brush than before. So we couldn't, for instance, go from the rust to painting the red and the white and then do the whole thing in silver. You want it a lot heavier uh, on the first coat and a lot lighter on this coat. So you want to give the illusion that the paint is chipped and old bash metal without going overboard. As you can see, it leaves an absolutely stunning result on the, on the red and white parts. And with that stage done, the Def Copter as a piece is mostly painted. We're going to quickly work on the pilot. So the first thing I want to do is go onto a wild flesh as a base coat for all of the skin. He's got about as much skin showing as a standard orc boy. So usually it's just his face uh, um, um, kind of side bits of his chest and his arms that are on show. So we're going to get a solid base coat of wild flesh on those parts. We're then going to move over to Corvus Black and we're going to use that to base coat his jumpsuit. 
Remember, he does not need to have an elaborate uniform on to denote that he is a speed freak. His death copter is doing that for you. And you don't want the, I don't feel like you want the pilot taking too much attention away from the machine itself. I think the machine is definitely the focal part of this model. So I'm going to give the entire um, jumpsuit or flight suit that he's wearing a coat of Corvus Black. And then we're going to go in with Seraph and Sapia and just wash the pilot. Very quick, very easy step, which is going to add a lot of detail to the model. After that's dry, uh, we are simply going to highlight the skin twice. We're going to start with Warboss Green. And because there's not that much uh, skin showing, these stages only take kind of a minute or two each. And it's once again, like that kind of feather technique, we want to leave a lot of that old dark wah flesh in all the recesses and creases of his face and then the, the break in all the muscle and just go in with a brighter paint on the more raised areas. The skin again is another focal point on orcs. If you are painting an orc army, try your best to get the skin to work. Do a nice job on the skin. It, it means a lot more than doing a nice job on his boots or his, you know, his little shirt or whatever. A scarce green was then gone in as the second highlight. I do apologize. I didn't realize as I was doing this that the rotor blades are like blocking the entire painting bit here. So, yeah, but once again, it's the same idea. Just going in and highlighting the bits we did before, but just lighter, so further away from the darker shadows, more on the higher areas. Uh, the tips on any sharp points on the model same thing with the muscle as you can see i'm not putting a lot of the green on just very small bits just to make that skin pop With that, I would call this Def Copter complete. You're obviously going to add all a few extra details, paint his flight hat, his goggles. If you want to add anything else to the Def Copter itself, the electrical grids, the wires, that is absolutely up to you. But that is a personal choice. And there we have it, guys. One Def Copter painted uh, maybe 15 minutes of brush time, maybe. So that means you can get an entire squadron of Def Copters done in an evening. No problem whatsoever. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give it a like. If you have any questions or requests for any future videos, put it in the comments below. And I will get back to each and every one of you guys. If you like what I do and want to support me even further, the two best ways that you can do that are one, make sure to hit that subscribe button and join along. And two, there's links to things like my Patreon down below, which will give you access to a bunch of cool rewards uh, in 2023. For instance, we are adding a private Patreon video um, every single week for you guys. So that means you will get 52 extra videos this year if you're a member of the Patreon. So there's never been a better time to get involved. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.